and welcome to this color it in video today i'll show you how to color this whale tail picture so if you want to follow along with me you can print the whale tail page from my e-coloring book number two which will be linked down below and you can print this onto smooth cardstock the main product that i used for this project was the 36 set of noyo gel crayons by doodle hog so this and all the other supplies I used will also be linked down below in the description box. And if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First, mask off your frame with some low tack tape. With the medium toned yellow, section off the bottom left half of the sky. I went as high up as just below the tip of the tail. So outline the tail and then color it in. Then color the next half of the section with the medium toned orange. Make sure to circle a little over the yellow. and then repeat with the lightest red from the box. Now holding down the paper, blend from light to dark and don't be afraid to mix the colors into each other. If you want to rework the yellow, Make sure to clean off any red from your finger first. It's okay to have orange on your finger though because you want it to blend right into the yellow. Now repeat the same thing on the other side. To make the water look like it's reflecting the sky, repeat the same steps except this time put the yellow at the top and red at the bottom. I'll start with the left section and then repeat the process on the right. When blending the water, make sure to finish by going in horizontal strokes to imitate the movement of water. Make sure to clean and dry your fingers before the next step. With the medium brown, draw in the horizon line. And for the mountains, 
Find the middle of the picture and start by drawing a V just above the middle of the tail. And then finish up drawing the mountains. I wanted the yellow to show above the mountains, so I drew them small, but for blending purposes, I'd recommend that you draw yours a little bigger than I did on this left side, like draw maybe only two or three peaks instead of those four small peaks like I did. Then color the left section with that same brown. Then with the dark brown, color the left side of each peak and along the bottom. Then blend all the light sides of the peaks, wiping off your finger before blending each one. and then blend the dark brown. The browns tend to be slippery during blending, so I recolored it and blended it by gently patting it. Now color in the middle mountains. So right here is where I realized that I meant to reverse the lighting pattern to now have the left side of this peak be light. So in my attempt to blend off the dark tone, I discovered that I liked having the yellow from the background showing through. It looked like a more dramatic light. So I went back and blended off some of the brown on the right side of the other mountain peaks. So now repeat the pattern for the rest of the mountains, except this time make the right sides of the peaks dark and the left sides light. When blending, press hard on the light tone to reveal the yellow, but lightly pat the dark tone. Then clean and dry your fingers before moving on. Now add highlights to the tail with the medium yellow and medium orange. And now color one side with black and let it slightly cross into the yellow and orange. When blending this, don't be afraid to push the black into the yellow and orange, but try to leave a sliver showing through. And now repeat for the other side. And now color and blend this triangular part of the tail. This part got a little messy with the black getting outside of the lines, so I scraped it out with an opened up paper clip and it worked great.
Here I went back and made the highlights thicker so that they looked more natural instead of skinny outlines and then I very gently blended them. And now let's add the reflection. Don't press too hard with the black and keep your lines separated, allowing some of the water to peep through. I started by following the curve of the tail, then when I blended, I tried straightening them out towards the bottom a bit to follow the movement of the water more. So now let's prepare some white paint. You just need a small drop and a fan brush. So load up the brush on both sides and we're going to make it look like water is falling off the tail. So turn the brush to the side so that just the corner tip will touch the paper and lightly dot 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 all the way down. Now load up the brush again and turn it so the whole bottom edge faces the paper and dot in some splash marks all around the tail. Make sure that the base of the tail gets covered with the splashes so you don't see its outline. And it's just a quick little push into the paper. Then as you move down, add the splashes in a horizontal pattern and then use the whole bottom edge of the brush to swipe in some water lines. Try to keep those lines horizontal, follow the angle of the bottom of the frame if that helps and brush them in lightly. So the next part is to add some clouds, but I didn't realize that my camera had stopped recording because it got full. So on the next clip, I'll show you on a separate piece of paper how I did the clouds. There's a color in your box that has a lavender barrel that sits between the pinks and the reds. It's sort of a cross between a dark red and a magenta. This is what I used for the base of the clouds. So what I did was circle in one big cloud and then tapered it towards the end and blended it into the sky. Then I added some highlights with white, leaving some of the dark tone showing through in between. And then once I liked how it looked, I brightened up the highlights even more with some white paint and a filbert brush and then softened the bottom edges of the white with my finger. And I did this on both sides of the sky, but one higher and one lower, and you'll see that in just a second. And then my final detail was to add some birds with black. 
Make sure to smooth off any crumbs or colors from it. Find an edge and make a wide, slightly curvy letter V. So here is the final picture. I'd suggest that you don't make your cloud so close to the tail like I did because you could end up smearing the black, which did happen to me, but I scraped it out and reworked it. But didn't it turn out so beautiful? Well, I hope you subscribe to my channel because I have so much more to share with you. Thanks so much. Bye.